anything, kitsch, anything about you, about everybody, uh, you know, sort of coming across something to do with kitsch before. Anything? I have actually. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Oh, I didn't know. I, someone said to me, what is kitsch? I didn't actually know. You would. I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. No, it's funny, isn't it? We've come across it. But I mean, I suppose you know, just, I've lived in a different type of world. Well, that's the thing, see. I mean, like, yeah. um, the term kitsch <coughs> is uh, something that nobody really understands. It's only... I, I've actually referenced um, the idea of what I thought was kitsch yeah. in the work that I've done uh, previously in the past. And it's only uh, through doing this uh, project that I've started to really come to terms with uh, what it actually means. Because, uh, I mean, there's just so much... Um, kind of stuff in society that uh, people, um, you know, think demands that title. Mm. Um, so uh, when you look at the history, history though, it's a lot deeper than that. I mean, uh, it's sort of around the th late thirties, people um, were first talking about uh, the idea of uh, something being, um, culturally less important um, uh, and mass-produced is it, it, it's, it's not so much about the actual piece of work as the way that it's uh, disseminated to um, an audience really you find. Uh, does anyone have any more questions about kitsch <laughs> or about Rubens? What exactly is it about that performance that you think is kitsch? <laughs> um, that is for you to decide. <laughs> Any more questions about oh, no. Do you want some painkillers? <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, Rubens, perhaps? To, uh, is there any more stuff people would like to say about Rubens, possibly? Um, um, you know, what, what do people get from looking at this painting? I mean, uh, can you understand why? Is it kitsch because, because it's a nice sort of well, that actually is, uh, that's the whole thing, it's not actually kitsch, uh, because the term kitsch didn't exist in the time when the painting was done. It's, it's only through people's perceptions of what they believe to be kitsch now that uh, they uh, sort of get confused and think that the t that's appropriate, which of course it isn't. Um, but... Uh, it's, uh, but you're right, the, the whole idea of the being called the cherubs and the, the sort of all flowing colours and the kind of uh, rhythm of it, it's, it, it's very garish and I think people get confused between something being garish and something being actually kitsch. Uh, you know, that gnome is garish, but the amount of effort that went into the process that built built gnome, because obviously it was probably made uh, in a factory, um, it probably, uh, well, it was, it, well, it definitely wasn't the same amount of effort that would have gone into Rubens doing one of his uh, quite, in my opinion, magnificent paintings. Were Rubens' paintings mass-produced in the sense that he didn't paint all of them? Ah, that's a good question, because, uh, yeah, um, a lot, he did <coughs> use a lot of... Um, assistance. I mean, he had a really big workshop shop, so a lot of the time, some of the paintings you see from Rubens, that he's only done the finishing touches or the composition, but that is where uh, his strength came, is in um, coming up with these compositions uh, and having this workshop where people knew the style that he wanted to produce and they produced it very well. All of the uh, Baroque painters, I mean, like even Caravaggio, um, had uh, a, a workshop. It's not this whole myth of, of the artist doing everything is exactly that. It's a bit of a myth. And when you look at uh, how much work Rubens produced, especially when you see something as grand and massive, stupidly massive as the Medici cycle, you, you, you kind of see that um, he. Uh, he, you know, the kind of mind behind creating that kind of thing, uh, not only the artistic mind, but the diplomatic skills involved in arranging something like that. That's that what we appreciate when we look at a Rubens masterpiece. How many paintings have got his, his signature on them? 
His, his signature um, is on uh, most of his paintings. Uh, but you can't always judge, um, you know, an artist's interaction with a piece just through the signature. I mean, Caravaggio, for example, you, you don't see many of his paintings with his signature on it. I mean, there's, uh, there is one where he's, he hid his signature in um, a blood splat spot on the floor uh, in a painting of an execution that he did. So uh, a, a lot of the time, the idea of somebody only judging if uh, a piece of work's genuinely by an artist by... Uh, you know, the prominence of their signature is quite a, a fake, and therefore maybe, you could argue, kitsch way of um, judging an artist's work, if you see what I mean. Um, anything else? Has this performance been done before? Is this what? Because you said kitsch is not like that's produced, so... Does that mean we have to do it again? I, no, no, I guess that means that it's not a kitsch performance, which... Which is good, really, isn't it? Um, see, see, technically, you're reproducing it through video. Ah, there you go. So maybe it is kitsch. Like I said, it's up to you. Spoken by a film student. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, we're well, being a lovely audience. Um,